this uh, Nebraska test suggests U.S. highways are not ready for widespread EV use. The University of Nebraska Lincoln does crash tests. This this crash test lab, you know, it's pretty nationally prominent, even internationally prominent. I know some some of the barriers that they use in NASCAR races or Formula One races have been developed at this space. Is the people inside the vehicle they feel would have been safe crashing over sixty miles an hour into one of these barriers? So good. Good for you, Rivian and, and other electric manufacturers, but. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. I'm proud to say that Mike Herzog is back with us today. He's been traveling for a couple of weeks and he's back. Okay, well, let's go ahead. Let's talk about this Nebraska deal. This uh, Nebraska test suggests U.S. highways are not ready for widespread EV use. The University of Nebraska Lincoln does crash tests. They've got their own Nebraska Transportation Center. Here, here you see a Rivian R1T running into a crash test barrier. You see a, it looks like a Tesla there in the background. So it looks like a Model Y that's been uh, mashed up. They apparently spend some money and <laughs> destroy EVs. <laughs> you know what? I had a friend send me this article and said, she said, hey, you should, you should talk about this on that podcast you do. And it said, that's a great idea. This, this is right up our the teller, that's appreciated. We always uh, looking for good topics because this is something a little different than what we've uh, you know covered before. As as you mentioned, so this this crash test lab, you know, it's pretty nationally prominent, even internationally prominent. I know some some of the barriers that they use in NASCAR races or Formula One races have been developed at this space through the university. So the University of Nebraska is kind of in our backyard, but they buy some cars and they they smash them and see what happens. So this this article was. I don't know if it was news or not. It was it was kind of interesting. It's um, maybe the end story is the people inside the vehicle they feel would have been safe crashing over sixty miles an hour into one of these barriers. So good good for you, Rivian and and other electric manufacturers. But the barrier got pushed back farther than they were expecting it to. But the rest of the article kind of said, well, yeah, that things seem to be intolerance. Um, things seem to work the way we thought they were going to, and we crashed them and. Yeah, maybe we should reevaluate a couple spots, but in all fairness, they tested some of the vehicles that are considered to be the safest. The Rivians and the Tesla well, the Tesla Model Y is considered to be the safest vehicle made. And we saw that in the background, even though it may not have been what they used in this, but the Rivians are considered to be ridiculously safe as well. Now, we saw those cases where that a guy tried to unalive himself and his family by running off a cliff. And they fell 150 feet, and everybody survived in a Tesla Model Three. Then we had that the Chinese people, who the Chinese woman was driving with four people in the car, and the vehicle went spinning in the air. She got it airborne, and then it landed, and everybody was able to walk away from the accident. It just shows that EVs are built to a different. You know, they're not like a regular car. They're built safer. But the other thing is these accidents would probably be very difficult to replicate without turning off all the safety features in the car. Right? Because the EVs are designed not to do that. To not do that. To have that sensor that say, yeah, you, you're going awfully fast and you're heading towards that wall. Like, divert, slow down. Yeah, divert or stop. Yeah, and you know the idea of these guardrails is to prevent somebody from killing themselves if they fall asleep and run off the road. If you fall asleep while driving a lot of most of the high end EVs they're testing, the car will just keep on going down the road to your destination. Yeah. And if something gets in the way, it'll slow down and stop so it doesn't hit it. it it's interesting because the tech in the EVs, now, this isn't necessarily the same like you're driving a Nissan Leaf. Okay. But what, the cars they're testing are higher end, uh, heavy, heavier EVs with large battery packs. But they're saying in here, 19,000 people died in crashes where their vehicle left the roadway in 2023. Now, a lot of these cases, the people may have been drunk, they may have been um, falling asleep or whatever, but these are things that EVs are designed to help you not have happen. And so I find this kind of fascinating. No, I, it's, like I said, it's fun because it's a local tie-in for us and, and what they're looking in, but the end, end message is like, yeah, it looks like a very safe vehicle. And, and this... These particular barriers are for construction zones. The idea is to keep the people working there safe too. Gosh darn, I mean, just in that video, those didn't move very far for, for a giant vehicle coming in at, at 60 plus miles an hour. So we'll, we'll see if anything develops from it, but it's just from the headline, you know, are U.S. highways ready for EV use to, to what the message is in the article? I mean, 
yeah, didn't look didn't look too bad. So no, I notice it keeps roll, anyway. landing on its tires and it stays upright. It doesn't go flipping around. Yeah. I remember Elon Musk saying you can't roll a Model X over. You know, you might be able to get it to go up on its side, but it'll roll right back over on its uh, on its tires. Oh, what were those? The we- weebles? Yeah, the, little, the, the weebles, weebles wobble. But it just has to do with uh, the design. The University of Nebraska is one of three places in the country that does these kind of tests. And the, the only one only one other place has done some testing on EVs against the barriers. It's interesting that they chose to do this here. The Nebraska researchers were applauded for investigating significant challenges the country faces to prepare its roadways for heavy EVs. But I mean, an EV is still not as heavy as a tractor trailer. I mean, it's not even comparable. We're, we're you know... It's like they're tiny compared to a 80,000 pound tractor trailer that's pushing 12 times the weight of the EV. That's also barreling through that construction zone at 60 miles an hour. The barrier suffered catastrophic damage, sending chunks of concrete flying and rupturing numerous steel reinforcing bars. <laughs> you know, it's worried about the barrier. You know, like they said, but the passengers were okay. I mean, they didn't put humans in there, but they... I, I, I mean, if you drive a Honda Civic into one of those barriers at 60, it's going to send concrete flying, right? You'd think so. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're working on the other side of it, I don't think you want anything hitting that barrier. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, you know, when I present our research at conferences, one of the questions I often get is, are electric vehicles unsafe? And they said that that's not really a fair perspective. Their farewell and the government's car assessment program and the crashworthy ratings from the Insurance Institute, which examines how the cars perform in collisions with other vehicles. The safety devices perform when a car unintentionally leaves its traffic lane for reasons like driver distraction or sleepiness, mechanical problems or medical problems, often referred to as errant crashes. Now, our mini EVs are very safe. Well, the higher end ones, you know, we know that from the five star crash ratings and all that and the actual real world incidents that i was talking about earlier with the model 3 and the model y that um there's no question that the cars themselves are very safe but it's just interesting like it could be more damaging to a concrete barrier Do you remember the old um, mercedes g-wagon commercials where the two crash test dummies got excited and they launched the g-wagon into the concrete barrier and then the two crash test dummies went through the barrier and they just kept on driving down the road you know on the other side of the building after they smashed it with the g-wagon and that was their thing was the g-wagon was super safe because it could it could smash through concrete could go through a building yeah. yeah and uh you know uh as opposed to destroying the crash test dummies which uh i don't think it could really do that but now maybe some of these heavier maybe. vehicles can ever truck that could yeah Get some momentum behind that. That would do some damage. Yeah, they're starting to get some situations where some cyber trucks have gotten, you know, banged up, but not nearly as whatever they came in contact with. You know, they perform really well. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. Do you have some feedback for us? Please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.